everybody, Buddy Cosplay here. I'm down in the shop. And yesterday I received a phone call from my mom. It was actually a video uh, she sent me. Uh, she thought she would be funny. She knows I'm down here doing this kind of stuff. And she sent me this. What wedding? Hey, son. Make me a pair of goggles for Steampunk, will you? That'd be great. I can't wait to get my outfit together. And I know you can make the best goggles, so will you make me a pair, please? Thanks. Bye. Now, the video quality was pretty bad, but uh, it did come from an Android phone. So go ahead and boo and hiss if you're not an Apple fanboy like me. But uh, I decided to go ahead and do what she asked. I made her a pair of steampunk goggles, which are right here. And this video, I'm going to show you how to make them, everything I did. I'm also going to provide you with a template, which you can get down in the description down below. So let's get started, and you can make your own steampunk style goggles for your next cosplay. Well, my mom always said she was strong enough to bring me into this world, and she was strong enough to take me out. So because of that, I think I'm going to make her some steampunk goggles. Go to my website, well actually go down to the description details, there will be a link to the website where you can download this template. And it's pretty simple. It's five pieces, we're going to make duplicates of each. So start by cutting them out, get you some two to three millimeter craft foam. This is two millimeter. I'd recommend three, but I don't have any, so I'm going to work with two. And we're going to transfer those onto here, like this. Magic. So what you end up with is two of piece three, which is the rim. I've got two of those. Two of section C, which only has a C here because the C will actually line up on this piece later. Two C's will combine like this. Got two of piece one, two of piece two, and two of the nose bridge. So out of these five pieces, you should have a total of 10 traced. It doesn't matter if they're frontwards or backwards because this kind of foam is the same on both sides. So you do not need to worry about flipping it or anything like that. So now we're going to cut these out using a sharp X-Acto knife. Use a straight edge where you can just to make the cuts a little cleaner. And then we'll have all pieces liberated from the foam. Starting with piece number two, you want to add glue to the ends. So we're going to make them into a circle like this. Choose the glue of your choice. I've got some barge rubber cement here that I'm using. And if you're using rubber cement, you add some, you give it about five minutes to get tacky where it doesn't really stick to your finger anymore. And then you can use those two pieces or the two edges that are glued, they will stick together. If you're using super glue, you can do that as well. Just put the glue on, hold it in place for 10 to 30 seconds and it will, um, it will stick. I wouldn't recommend using hot glue because these are going to be small and any kind of overage or seepage from the hot glue will show pretty bad. So we're just going to start with piece number two. So it has glue on the ends and I'm just going to line up the edge. Just like that. and set that aside, aside to dry. These will serve as the inner structure of our goggles. Next we're going to do is take section one, and glue the underside of those, and they're going to go to make a second layer around here. So we have two layers thick. Glue has been added to the outside of part two and the inside of part one for both of these. We're going to start by lining this up so these two pieces will cover one another. They both have this hump. We also want to make sure this back layer lines up. This is probably just as important as the other, but we can always, we can always touch this up with the sander as we go. 
make the adjustments as you need it. I stretch the foam a little bit. When you stretch the foam, made it a little bit longer. Don't forget this is contact cement. So you have to make sure it's got good contact to stick. So now you'll have one lens. The next part is adding the rim to the goggle part. And I like to use a cap. I just have a cap off of this that fits perfectly in here. It will help this keep its shape. That way I don't have to worry about it not being so round. If you don't have something like this, you can just make sure you do it carefully. But if you have some kind of cap that will fit in there, that will help you out a little bit. Now we're just going to use super glue this time. Just go start on one end with the super glue. And drop it on the floor again. It may not line up perfectly, but we can do a little sanding to kind of fix that up. So here's one goggle. We'll continue that with the next. Now you have your goggle sections. Now with these goggles, these ends are going to be on the outside. So go ahead and line them up so the goggles are on the outside and just make a mark where they meet. I'll make a line in the next section up a little bit easier. It's about the center section. I'm going to take those little marks and move them out so I can see them. Now we've got the nose guards. We're just going to bend the ends so the ends touch on the inside. That'll be our mark. I'm going to take that, put super glue on one end, and touch it right above that line. Just like that. I'm going to take the second one. Do the same thing. That's included it. And we're going to put on the opposite side. Just like that. Glue the centers together. For this part, we're going to repeat and glue on the other goggle. Now you want to go ahead and glue both. put it on there. Now it's time to do a test fit to make sure you can see through. You can make adjustments if you want that might be a little further apart than I'd like. So I'm just going to snip a piece out and glue that back together. I'm going to snip it, cut a small section out. That's all I cut, just enough to bring it a little closer together. Cut out a small section, do a test fit again, make sure it's going to work, and then glue it together. If you don't need to make an adjustment, you're good to go. If you have to cut this, just go ahead and make a small, take a piece of small, a small piece of scrap foam, 
we're just going to make a brace for that just to make sure this will hold up really well. Now is a good time to go in with a sanding stick or some sandpaper or even a rotary tool and just clean up any edges that aren't matching that one. Just use it to lightly sand. Try to make those a little bit more even and flush. If you're not familiar with how to make a sanding stick, you can look at my playlist video. I have a video showing you how to make these. They really come in handy. Really good for shaping your phone. Next, we're going to connect spot C with spot C on both sides. Just add some glue and stick them together. I like to add a little extra glue in this area because this is going to be supporting most of the tension of your glasses. So make sure you make sure it's stuck on there really good. If you want to reinforce the bridge you can do that as well. We're going to move on to the last part which is some elastic straps for the back. This will give it the tension to stay against your head. I would recommend using black because this whole thing's going to be black. I don't have any black. So I'm just going to make do with what I have and use white. I'm going to use hot glue for this. You can use whatever glue you want, but I recommend hot glue because it can get down these fibers for you. So what you want to do is put some glue on here, get this to stretch over the glue, and that will help this glue get into the fibers and everything. So I'm going to take some glue. Put it on there. Stretch this. Well, that glue to get into the into the sections. Once you're done with that, put it on your head and get an idea of how much of this you want. Just so happens I cut right about the exact I need. No more, no less. It might actually be a little too tight. Once that's set up, your goggles are pretty much finished. We're just going to do some detailing. First thing I'm going to do is make my strap black. You had elastic strapping that was already black. You could skip this. I'm just using a Sharpie to darken that helps to stretch it. Our basic shape of our goggles is now complete. We're just going to spice these up with some different types of additions. Uh, I have an old pair of safety glasses. I'm going to cut the rings or the circles out that will fit in here. I just basically took them, sorry, I'm dropping things in this video, put them on here used a erasable marker to draw that on the outside so I could see where that would fit and then I used a permanent marker gave it about a half inch on each side to mark so I can cut that big enough to fit down in there but small enough that it'll hold inside so I've got two lenses I've got yellow I think they'll go fine with this you can use tinted you can use whatever I've got some rub and buff to add some detail paint which you can use acrylic if you want, but I'm going to use rub and buff. I like the metallic sheen of it. And I've got a hole punch and some more craft foam. Just going through and making some little, some little circles. I'm going to use these for detail. Now I've marked out everywhere I want detail. I'm going to put these little circles around here to make them like little screws. Put some on the side as well. I've also marked on the sides where I'm going to put them. I'm going to put a hole in the center. And I'm going to use something to make it appear like a wire. I've got some weed eater trimmer line, but it's square. I don't know if I'm going to be able to use this or not. So I might look for something else. But something that will run alongside here 
and look kind of like a tube or an electrical wire. I might just use some electrical wire to be honest with you. That'll probably be the easiest bet. So I'm going to go ahead and start the detailing of this. You can detail yours however you like. Uh, it's really up to you, but I'll show you as I go through with mine. I'm going to start with the little rivets on the top. I'm going to mark them, so I'm going to do a couple at a time. I just happen to have a pair of tweezers. To kind of help keep the glue off my fingers a little bit. There they are on the rim. I'm going to move on to the side pieces. The little bolt would be here. Of course, you can make your design however you wish. This is just the things I was thinking would look neat. You can see on the top I marked where two, two dots were going to be in a line between them. That's going to be for the wire. They're going to actually pop out of that wire, or out of that little area. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in first, and I'll do that wire after that is set up. I'm continuing around with my design, laying the little rivet things as I go, or I've marked them. Now it's time to add some detail to these rivets. I can hit them with one slice across there, hit it with heat gun, those will open up, or I can make a little valley going this way and this way to um, make it more like a screw head. So I was to cut a little in that way, put it in this way, so that center piece comes out like that. I'm only doing this on the rim. So I'm going to continue that process around all of them on the rim. All the screw heads are done on the front and I went ahead and did the side pieces as well. And now it's time to start figuring out the wiring. I've got some old random wire here. I'm just going to cut it because I don't really need any of that actual wire. I'm just going to use this to connect one piece to the other. And I'm just going to do that by bending it. Bend the section like this. Glue that in, do that to the next section, and so on and so forth. Before I can do that, I need to punch some holes in these other screws. Going ahead and letting that go all the way through. Now what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of glue on there and push this down inside. Let's see if I have any thinner wire. I do. I've got some thinner wire. That'll work better than this. It's much bendier. So drop the glue in. Stick that in the hole and give it a second to cure. Now we're just going to follow the lines with the glue and begin gluing these down. This glued down pretty good. You need to kind of measure out how much you need, cut off the rest, and then we're going to get this piece to go into this hole. Just like that. I'm going to repeat that for the other ones as well. Okay, all the pieces are on. And to finish up the detail, we're just going to cover this nose piece. 
with uh, some yarn or something. I have this, I don't know, wrapping paper type of string. I'm just going to use that to go around this a few times just to change up the look of it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue one in down. I'll start wrapping it and then I'll glue the end down when I'm finished. It's really up to you what you want to do here. I just think this will change up the look a little bit, give it a different texture. We'll also cover up that little support bridge we put in there to support the nose piece. So I think I'm going to go a second layer, thicken it up a little bit. I'm trying to keep the things as tight together as possible without really going so tight I'm injuring the foam in any way. I want to mess with the shape of it. just want to keep the coils nice and flush. Hold that in place. I just glued it right there. Add a little extra glue. I'm just going to run a bit of glue across the whole base, which will help it all stay together. And I'll do it on the top as well. And there's our finished piece. Oh, detail finished. We have to paint and seal it. To seal this, you can use Mod Podge, you can use liquid latex. I'm going to use um, Plasti Dip because all these little rivets and stuff, I want to give them an extra bit of security in that uh, Plasti Dip will help put a layer over top which will hold everything down and together. Also cover everything and make everything one continuous texture at the end. Uh, you, the same thing will happen with liquid latex and such, but I don't have any liquid latex on me currently. So we're going to use Plasti Dip. Here are the goggles with two layers of Plasti Dip on it. There's still some areas that didn't get covered real well with the Plasti Dip, so I'm just going to cover that up with black paint. So I'm just going to put two good layers of acrylic black paint on this, and then we'll move on to making it come to life. Okay, two layers of acrylic have been put on. I made an adjustment to mine so I can have a little bit more room in my strap so it's, uh, it's a little larger now. So this is a good time to make any kind of final adjustments you need to make because we want to start the final painting and then we're going to seal it. I've got a scrap piece of paper here I'm going to use Rub and Buff. I've got a gold and I've got a silver. I'm going to use silver for bolts and things like that and gold and the background areas. Now with rub and buff all I need to do is put a little bit out. Try to get it where it's not gooey like that. And you just take a finger and prepare to get a stained finger. A little bit on your finger. going with it just like this. And add as little or as much as you want. I really want the pipes to be the gold coppery color. So I'm making sure I'm getting them really well. That's the beautiful thing about this, is it leaves some of the dark detail behind. It really starts to bring this life to life and it gives it that mechanical look. I think I'm going to do those pieces like this too. It could be copper wire. What's neat about this rub and buff is you can't really get it in the smaller corners of the detail, like around the bolts, so it makes it look old and grungy, which is kind of the look we're going for. So we don't have to weather it. 
which is a nice thing. You don't have that step to worry about. I'll go ahead and do the band as well. The gold is all on. And I'm just going to finish that up. Maybe it's bronze, uh, but we'll say gold. Finish that up with a little bit of silver. I'm going to use just kind of highlight these guys a little bit. It really brings the bolts out by doing this. Of course, you can use acrylics for this exact same thing. I prefer the rub and buff. It's a much more authentic look. And, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for now. I think these are pretty much done. I'm going to put in the lenses after I seal it, and we'll be all done. I'm going to seal it using a matte varnish. You can use a spray clear coat as well. This is what I have handy. So this is what I'm going to use. And this will protect the, the coat underneath. This will keep everything from coming off. And since it's matte, it won't really add a shine. But it'll protect all the detail that we put in here. So make sure you protect your finish with a clear coat. One to two layers should be sufficient. I already cut my lenses to fit, now I'm just attaching them with hot glue, just securing them into place, and then we'll be all done with this. And there you go, 100% complete steampunk inspired goggles. Alright mom, there you go, hope you like them. So there you are, your very own steampunk inspired goggles. Make them for your mom, make them for your brother, make them for yourself. Just make sure you make them. Stay crafty.